So if you can turn to page seven of your packet, we're going to talk about rationalizing denominators. All right, um, rationalizing denominator just means you want to rewrite the denominator so it only contains rational numbers. So basically, in other words, you want to get rid of these radicals right here that are in the denominator of the fraction. All right, well, if you have a monomial denominator, like we have in number one, to get rid of the radical, I mean, there's a couple ways you could do it, but the easiest way to do it is just to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by the radical itself. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by radical 8. Okay, so when I do, on the top, I'm left with 4 radical 8. And on the bottom, radical 8 times radical 8 is radical 64, which simplifies to 8. Remember, if you're multiplying two radicals that have the same number under it, it's just equal to that number. All right, so now once we do this, what we want to do is we want to simplify. So, I mean, there's a couple things you could do to simplify this. First thing, um, 4 over 8 simplifies to 1 half. And then also, we can simplify the radical 8. So I'm going to go through and rewrite. Radical 8 simplifies to radical 4 times radical 2. I'm going to put that over the 2. And the square root of 4 is 2. And what's going to happen is this 2 on the top, is going to cancel with this 2 on the bottom, leaving me with just radical 2. Okay, if you take a look at number 2, I'm sorry, at number 3, um, technically the denominator is a, bi is a monomial. Okay, we have one single radical right here. I mean, there's a binomial within the radical, but because we have one single radical, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by the radical itself. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this by rad x minus 9. Sorry, my pen is a little bit bigger than the uh, font of the question. Okay, so rather than distributing the x to the rad x minus 9 and the negative 9 to the rad x minus 9, I'm going to keep them as separate for right now. Because a lot of times if you keep them for se if you keep them as separate, it makes simplifying in the end a little bit easier. So I'm just going to keep my numerator as x minus 9 times rad x minus 9. Okay, and then in the denominator, rad x minus 9 times rad x minus 9. Remember, when you're multiplying two things, two, two of the same thing under the radical, it leaves you with whatever's there. So I'm going to be left with x minus 9 in the denominator. Now, it's actually a good thing I didn't distribute this x to the radical and the negative 9 to the radical. Because as you could see, the x minus 9 in the numerator is going to cancel off with the x minus 9 in the denominator, and it leaves me with just radical x minus 9. Okay, so what you'll notice in number 5 is we now have a binomial denominator. Okay, we have a term separated from another term with a subtraction sign here. So we have a binomial, two terms. Alright, now whenever you have a binomial denominator, what you want to do is you want to multiply the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by what we call the conjugate. Okay, the conjugate just means you take this expression, 4 minus radical 2, and you just change this middle sign. So the conjugate of 4 minus radical 2 is 4 plus radical 2. So that is what I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by. Okay, so let's start with our numerator here. All right, well, we're going to have to double distribute. So when I distribute the 5 to both terms, it's going to give me 20 plus 5 rad 2. When I distribute the radical 2 to both terms, radical 2 times 4 is 4 radical 2. And radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2. You could again write it as radical 4, but that's going to simplify to just 2. Alright, so let's double distribute on the bottom. So we have 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times radical 2 is 4 radical 2. It's kind of hard for me to see these numbers here now because I uh, <laughs> wrote over them. All right, so negative radical 2 times 4 is negative 4 radical 2. And negative radical 2 
times positive radical 2 is just negative 2. Now, the reason why we multiply by the conjugate of the denominator is because we want to get rid of the radicals in the denominator of the fraction. And if you look at what happens here with these two terms, we have a positive and a negative of the same exact thing. That's always going to happen when you multiply by the conjugate. The two middle terms are just going to cancel off. So now in the denominator of our fraction, we have a rational term. 16 minus 2 is just 14. Okay, and then in the numerator, let's combine our like terms. So we're going to combine our whole numbers. 20 plus 2 would be 22. And 5 radical 2 plus 4 radical 2 is 9 radical 2. Now what you want to do is you want to look at all of these numbers here that are not under the radical. We have a 22, a 9, and a 14. And you want to say, is there something that divides evenly into all of them? If there is, you want to divide by that number and simplify the fraction. But in this case, there's not, so this is our answer. Okay, if you flip to the next page, number 7 is the last one that we're going to look at here with this video. All right, so if we look at the denominator, we have radical x minus 3. We again have a binomial. We have two terms separated by either an addition or subtraction sign. In this case, it's subtraction. So what we want to do is we want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of what's in the denominator. So remember, the conjugate means you take this middle sign and you change it. So the conjugate of radical x minus 3 is radical x plus 3. So we're going to do that in the numerator as well as the denominator. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm just kind of looking ahead a little bit and I mean, we re you know, we don't have any radicals in this term right here. So rather than me taking this and distributing it to both terms, because when I do that, I'm going to have an x radical x and when I eventually distribute the negative 9 to the radical x, these are not going to be like terms that we can combine because if you have a variable in front of your radical x, and then a number in front of your radical x, those are not like terms. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to leave this separate. I'm going to leave this as x minus 9. I'm just going to leave it as, I guess in another parenthesis, radical x plus 3. I made that radical kind of big. I probably shouldn't have done that. Let's erase that. Okay, and then in the denominator, let's double distribute. So radical x times radical x is just x. Radical x times 3 is positive 3 radical x. Negative 3 times radical x is negative 3 radical x. Make that x a little better over here. And negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Now keep in mind, when we multiply by the conjugates, these two middle terms should always cancel out. If they don't, it means you made a mistake somewhere. Alright, so then in the denominator, let's start with that, we're left with just an x minus 9. And again, look, good thing I kept this separate because see this x minus 9 in the numerator? That is going to wind up canceling out with the x minus 9 in the denominator. And I'm just going to be left with that radical x plus 3 that was in my numerator.